Hello everybody. It's been a while since I posted like an actual video. Instead of just memes. But yeah. We're just gonna do like a catch up video. Based on like what's been going on in the NASCAR world lately. So let's go back a few days ago to Tuesday, I think. Somebody on Twitter ended up taking a picture of the Ford Mustang and Chevrolet Camaro next-gen cars for next year. I'm sure every single person that's watching this video has seen that picture already. So, yeah. Basically, I mean, they couldn't wait. A week? They couldn't wait a week to reveal the schemes. They couldn't wait a freaking week. They, they, why is it so hard to not do? It was the it was similar to the thing that I felt for for when Jimmy Johnson's 2019 throwback got leaked by none other than my good buddy Noah Gregson. But th that was a paint scheme. This is the car that we're using for like the next 10 years after this year. <laughs> They're just gonna leak it a week early instead of having an actual announcement. At least they didn't... At least they didn't reveal all three of them. Like, if they revealed the Toyota one too, which I'm pretty sure is just gonna be the same exact Camry they've used since 2017, literally they have not changed that car model at all. But this isn't about the Camaro. So yeah, the Camaro just looked exactly like the Camaro that they already use. Except for a little wider. But then, the Mustang? The Mustang has a couple changes to it. This one looked like the Shelby GT500 that I'm sure you've seen pictures of. But. And. To me, it pretty much just looked like a late model. I mean, it looked like a mix between a late model and a Pinty's car. If you ask me. So anyway, on to the next thing. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. apparently wants the numbers to be changed to the all-star race numbers that they used last year. And given that NASCAR pretty much does everything Dale Earnhardt Jr. says, I mean, Dale Earnhardt Jr. pretty much owns NASCAR now, instead of just an Xfinity Series team. So, since they think of Dale Jr. as like their messiah or whatever, they're probably going to change the numbers next year because he approves of them. I mean, why wouldn't they? It's Dale Earnhardt Jr. of all people. Yeah. Collig Racing has announced that they will be running a full-time Cup Series team in 2022. Probably unchartered, because all the charters are currently taken, and I don't see anybody losing a charter right now besides maybe Spire. Maybe not even Spire. You know, I don't really see anybody losing a charter, to be honest. Like, there's been some rumors that Rick Ware Racing could, could lose the 52's charter this season because of how terribly Josh Balicki is doing. I mean, it's a Rick Ware car. It's pretty much just a field filler, but... It's basically just a start and park that doesn't... park. It just drives slowly around in a circle for three hours. 
finishing like 15, 20 laps down every week. If they're not wrecking out. But, yeah. Rick Ware Racing ends up losing one of their charters to call it racing. That would be interesting because that could actually bring a talented driver into the driver's seat for a full-time Cup Series ride. Like, I believe Josh Palicki's running for Rookie of the Year this year. I'm not sure if he is or not, but... Yeah. And... I think that... The 16 car... I'm, it's gotta be the 16. I don't know what other number it could be. <laughs> like, they've used the 16, so... I assume they're gonna use the 16 some more. But, yeah, anyway... I think there's three possible drivers for that car. The first is pretty obvious, Justin Haley. Like, he's got a win in the Cup Series, he's got three wins in the Xfinity Series, all being on plate tracks, but... Yeah, but he's been consistent on regular tracks, too, so it's not like he's only doing good on plate tracks. It's not like he's David Reagan or anything. And... I think that if they want to bring Justin Haley up for his full-time Cup Series season, then I think, honestly, that I think that's the driver they should use. Like, I mean, he's either going to be going there or full-time at Spire, but to be honest, I think Colling is probably the best bet for him. Uh, the... 77 can keep being a uh, mix of different drivers. And the next driver I think they could use is Kaz Gerala. I think this is probably the worst choice they could make of all these three drivers. I mean, I know he got a top five at Talladega, but I don't think he's ready for Cup yet. He has not raced a full-time season in any NASCAR series since 2017, and I think he needs to go back to the Xfinity series at least for one season. Maybe drive for... Maybe drive in the 11 if Justin Haley moves to the Cup Series to drive the 16. But I think Col I think Kaz Brawla needs a little bit more time before he gets to move up into the Cup Series. And the last of the drivers that I'm going to assume is A.J. Allmendinger. I know he already has a lot of cup experience. He hasn't raced a full cup season since 2018, however. But since then, he's got a bunch of Xfinity Series wins. And I believe scored a top 10 at the Daytona Road Course in the College 16 in the Cup Series. So yeah, if they want like a driver that's really good on road courses to start off their first full-time season, I think AJ Allmendinger is the guy that you want to pick. So yeah, if I was if I were Matt Culling, I would either choose to put Justin Haley or AJ Allmendinger in the number 16 car. And the last thing I want to talk about is some of the throwback paint schemes for this weekend, or not this weekend, next weekend. So yeah, personally, one of my favorites out of all three series right now is Riley Herbst's number 98 throwback to Tony Stewart's rookie season. Like, the throwback last year was pretty good too for this car. If anything, this car is a little bit worse than that, but it's still an amazing paint scheme. Like, they even changed the logo to match the throwback paint scheme, I guess. And that thing is going to look super cool on the racetrack. The next paint scheme I want to talk about is... Um, I forgot. Oh yeah, probably one of the worst throwbacks so far. Harrison Burton's... Jeff Burton throwback, I think it is. It's either Jeff Burton or Scott Wimmer. But the throwback is not good, in my opinion. I know some people really liked it, but 
Harrison Burton's throwback to the dad is just, it's not good. Like, the colors aren't even the same. They did change the, the logo to fit the throwback, but it's, it's red. The throw, the car is red. The original, the original paint scheme was green, and they changed it to red for some reason. That's like when Ryan Newman changed the Mark Martin paint scheme he had in 2019 to fit the Oscar Mayer colors. Because, like, like, why can't they just keep the colors? Like, they could have had a Hunt Brothers throw, they could have had a Hunt Brothers throwback with green. They didn't have to use sport clips. They could have put, uh, Ty Dillon or whoever's in the 54 next week in the sport clips machine. Why did they have to put Burton in the sport clips car? Actually, is it even sport clips or is it Dex Imaging? If it's Dex Imaging, then there's even less of a reason to not use uh, Hunt Brothers Pizza. I mean, Hunt Brothers Pizza, at least the at least the company logo on Hunt Brothers Pizza is green. The original car was green. Why couldn't they use Hunt Brothers? And last but not least is probably the worst Darlington throwback I have ever seen. I'm sure you've all seen it by now. Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s throwback. They literally did nothing to change it from the other paint scheme besides make the gradient instead of having that little swoosh or whatever from the NOS paint scheme. I'm pretty sure they've used Tide before this year, too. I think they used it at, like, Vegas or something. They've used Tide before, and all they did was switch the gradient. And apparently it's a throwback to Ricky Craven. This car looks nothing like Ricky Craven's car. It looks absolutely nothing like this throwback. Ricky Craven's 2003 paint scheme. Like, most of the, most of the, most of the Stenhouse scheme is blue. There's not a single speck of blue on the original car. It's literally just the same paint scheme, but with a gradient. And they think this is a throwback. Like, there's a couple... Like, why can't you just throw back to... To Marco Sambros? Like, in your... In the Nationwide Series days. Or Stacy Compton in your team's Nationwide Series days. Or Bobby Labonte's 2011 Daytona 500 paint scheme. I really liked that scheme. Why couldn't they just throw back to that? Why did they have to make... I'm sure you've seen the picture by now. They had to make that. Instead of... Bobby Labonte, or Marcus Ambrose, or something, like, JTG Doherty Racing has made some of the worst paint schemes I have ever seen. First of all, they have almost no logos on the car at all. I, I swear, there's like two logos on the entire car every week. There's a, like, I remember, uh, Ryan Priest's, uh, I think it was, it was a paint scheme, I don't know, it was, it was some sort of, like, ultra seltzer or something, I don't know, oh, and he also used it for a Slim Jim car, too, at Homestead, for a Slim Jim car, he had a giant Slim Jim logo on top of a yellow paint scheme, with another Slim Jim logo way in the back of the car. Like, pretty much on the corner panel. And then the number. That was the paint scheme. It's almost the same thing for the other paint schemes as well. Like, Ricky's, pretty much all of Ricky Stenhouse's paint schemes have just been the same paint scheme, but the back of the car has changed. His NOS car was even more terrible. The one he used for the Daytona 500. Like, he 
For the other paint schemes, at least he like changed the back of the car where the logo was. Like they changed the color completely. They just added an orange swoots. That didn't make any sense. But they added like they added an orange swoots. It's they added an orange line. That's that makes more sense. But yeah. They pretty much just had the same paint scheme as last year, but got rid of all the white in the back and put an orange line where it was. And they call that a paint scheme. They, whoever designs JTG Doherty Racing's paint schemes needs to be fired now. Like, I thought, I thought Hendrick's paint schemes were bad. At least they're getting a little bit better. Like... DTG is, like, they put, the designer puts almost no effort into their cars. Almost no effort. Whoever designs their cars needs to be thrown out of the door by a couple of bodyguards or something and just walk home in the pouring rain knowing that he can't design cars. Because the, he can't. He cannot design cars. Whoever designs JTG Doherty Racing's paint schemes needs to be fired. I don't think I've seen a single good paint scheme from them. I mean, then you, you've got Stenhouse's NAS scheme, which I've already talked about. And then you got Priest's Bristol Dirt scheme, which is an absolute nightmare to look at. Like, the only good scheme that I've seen of them all year is their Louisiana Hot Sauce scheme. And that's usual. Like, that's the usual. The Louisiana Hot Sauce Scheme is usually the only good team. The only good paint scheme at that team. Besides maybe their Energizer car from last year at Bristol, but... But yeah, all the... All the book... Half the paint schemes are terrible. So anyway, that's a random video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.